Hello, Hopkinton community. I'm Carol Cavanaugh, superintendent of the Hopkinton Public Schools. As you probably know, and as you can see on the screen, we are about to start our budget launch for the FY21 budget. And on Tuesday evening, September 24th, members of the school committee and the school department will be meeting with the Board of Selectmen here in Hopkinton. When we meet with the select board, uh, they will be giving the schools a budget message for FY21. And I wanted to inform families about some of the needs that we will be having here in the Hopkinton Public Schools. As you know, it's no secret that we have had enormous enrollment growth over the past two to three years. And so this year, we are going to have a lot of asks of this community, and we're hoping that you will support us. Not only are we going to have operational requests, but we will also be having capital requests. Capital requests will probably involve additions to our physical spaces, and operational requests will predominantly involve requests for our full-time educators in our public schools. Essentially, we need more teachers to teach the number of students before us. I'd like to illustrate that for you, and I'm going to use the Hopkins Elementary School to do so. As you're looking at the screen, you're going to be able to see that the right-hand side of it is blue, and what you're seeing are class sizes for our current third graders and our current fourth graders. That's at the top of that slide. These are the students who will become fourth graders and fifth graders in FY21. Currently in the third grade, we have 306 students enrolled, and they are spread out over 13 classrooms. The average class size currently in the third grade is 23.5 students. As a school district, we believe this number is too high, but it's certainly tenable. And so that's the, the number of students in classrooms that we're working with this year. And our teachers and our administrators and our paraprofessionals are doing a very good job of teaching your children. In grade four, we have 292 students enrolled. They are spread out over 12 classrooms. The average class size there is 24.3. So what I've tried to do is to take those numbers of third graders and fourth graders and project them forward to Hopkins School next year. They will be our fourth graders and our fifth graders. If I add in 10 students at each grade level, and I can tell you that that is a conservative estimate, uh, we have 316 fourth graders next year and 302 fifth graders next year. And again, this is an estimation. Just so you have a sense of the accuracy of the estimation, this year we netted 23 fourth graders. So if we were looking at this year, an estimate of 10 would have been way too low for the fourth grade, but we netted eight fifth graders. So an estimate of 10 would have been pretty accurate. So next year, if we have 316 students spread out over 14 classrooms, we would be starting the year with 22.5 fourth graders in each classroom. If we had 302 fifth graders spread out over 14 classrooms, we would have 21.6 fifth graders in each classroom. That's ideally where we would want to be. But if there are more than four, 10 students who join each one of those classes, we won't be there. We will be at much larger class sizes. What we're planning for at this stage in the game are 14 classes in the fourth grade and 14 classes in the fifth grade. Currently, we have 12 and 12. So if we are going from 12 fourth grade and 12 fifth grade to 14 in each grade level, we are going to need to hire four regular classroom teachers. And when you hire four regular classroom teachers, you also need to hire portions of art teachers, music teachers, PE teachers, wellness teachers, L teachers, special educators. And so sort of taking a look at that, uh, we would have about five FTEs with a salary of about $80,000. And again, that salary is a guess, and it's fairly conservative. Five teachers times $80,000 brings us to a $400,000 increase, and that's in one school, and that is only looking at teachers. It doesn't look at any of the materials, the supplies, the textbooks, or anything else that we need to educate your children. So why is that number so important? And I think what I show you next will help you to understand why the operational budget in the school department this year will be so enormous, or at least why our ask will be so enormous. On the screen, you see estimated personnel costs. These are estimates, but they are probably very good estimates. If we look at our current salary and we add 2.5% to that, 
and that 2.5% is contractually obligated. It's what the town has no negotiated with the teachers. They are getting a 2.5% increase in this third year of a three-year contract. That number is 960000 so very close to a million dollars. If you look at our step raises, and when we talk about step raises, it means that a teacher has been teaching for three years and is on the third step and then moves to the fourth step, for example, or six years and moves to the seventh step. We have 140 teachers approximately poised to do that. And the average step increase is somewhere around $2,900 or $3,000. The number, the dollar figure on that is $406,000. And then we have teachers who will also make what we call lane changes. It means that they are going from a bachelor's degree to a master's degree, or a master's degree to a lane called master's plus 15, indicating they have 15 credits beyond their master's degree. Currently, we have budgeted $200,000 for that. And they're really, this is probably the, the $1 figure in the top of this slide that you see that is, is fairly hard to pin down because some people will indicate that they're getting a master's degree and then they're a course short so they don't. Some people will get a master's degree and end up with 15 credits beyond it because they've been super ambitious. So it's really hard to tell. Um, teachers do give us an intent to move lanes for them. So we have some data on this. At any rate, Salary is typically about 80% of our school budget. And what we're looking at next year is $1,566,000, and all of those dollars are obligated. They're not negotiable. They are on the table. This is what we will owe to our, our teaching force. Now, if we take that money, the $1,566,000, and we add it to the request from Hopkins, and again, this is just to lower class sizes and put teachers in front of all the students. We, t we get $1,966,000. So for the sake of simple math, we could call it $2 million. At the bottom of the slide, you can see that every $500,000 constitutes about 1% of our budget. So when you're talking about $2 million, what we're looking at here, just to pay the, our, our personnel, and just to add personnel to one of our schools, the Hopkins School, we're at 4%. In those smaller boxes, I've outlined the high school, the middle school, the Elmwood School, Marathon, and any special education costs. This doesn't include curriculum costs. It doesn't include technology costs. It doesn't include busing costs. But as you're looking at those boxes, you can see there are question marks in them. And so when you look at the growth at Hopkins, the growth across the district is not dissimilar. It's not as if all of the students entered Hopkins, but they are spread out pretty evenly across Marathon, the high school, the middle school. So if you imagined that each one of those boxes also represents very close to a percent, you can imagine that the school budget may need to go up about 10% next year with this sort of back of the napkin, back of the envelope kind of map. Now, I point this out not because I want to be alarmist, but I point this out because it, these are now the very real needs of our schools. In FY19, we had 189 additional students. In FY20, we have currently 250 additional students. I can show you that on this enrollment slide. So what you're seeing here are the number of students who have entered our school district this year and the number of students who have exited our school district this year. At the elementary level, you can also see the number of teachers we have teaching at that grade level. And then you can see the average class sizes today. The target class sizes would be 18 to 19 for our kindergarten and first grade learners, 19 to 20 for grades 2 and 3, and 22 for grades 4 and 5. In order to get as close to those numbers as we can, we are going to have a, a big operational ask in terms of hiring more teachers to put in front of the children of Hopkinton. Periodically, I will stand before you during this budget season and do some of these sort of updates so that you can see them um, on TV at home and you have a sense of where we are. That said, you can also join us at any school committee meeting because we do these same updates there and we meet every two weeks on Thursday evenings. Those are posted on uh, the school website and they are also posted on the town calendar. I hope that you will pay very close attention to the school budget asks this year 
And I hope that you'll also pay attention to the capital asks because we are going to need to put uh, modular classrooms or build out some of our schools. And there's more information that will be coming forth on that. I thank you for watching and I thank you for any support that you can give to the public schools. I hope that you understand the enormity of our asks and the rapid enrollment. But we believe in every child learning at very high levels, all means all. Thank you.